What's going on guys? Bengali and you're coming back at you with another video. Today we will be rebuilding the Indianapolis Colts. Andrew Luck is back and healthy and he should be hopefully the focal point of this rebuilding video. If you guys are new here, I would appreciate you hitting that subscribe button if you are not already. And I am ready as ever. I got my milkshake and uh, welcome to the fucking yard, boys. So this team is pretty much a disaster. It's just, it's the easiest way to say it. The offense is the best part of the team and it's really not even that good. Andrew Luck, of course, is a talented player. If he can stay on the field and stay healthy, he's going to be very, very good. And he has been in the NFL. Hopefully, he can be for us. I'm not sure how his development is going to work out. But Marlon Mack isn't really starting caliber running back for us in Madden. 77 overall is not going to cut it. And then outside of T.Y. Hilton, we have Ryan Grant, who's not very good. And then, like, what, Chester Rogers? This is not a great receiving trio if you will ty hilton's great good slot receiver but outside of him we have no real skill position playmakers jack doyle is decent he's 28 years old there's a glitch at the start of the year where he was uh like 34 which didn't really work as well jack doyle should be good for our starting tight end and we might look to trade eric ebron and then on the offensive line i mean it's anything but good denzel good I mean, like, Ryan Kelly is starting, which is not great. We have Quentin Nelson, who should be fantastic. Anthony Costanzo has quick development. He is 30. We're going to definitely look to trade him. And then defensively, it is a disaster. We're going to go ahead and uh, refresh here. Corey Moore is not going to start over Malik Hooker. That's just not going to happen. We have, what, Darius Leonard? Darius Leonard is pretty bad. We have Anthony Walker out of Northwestern. It is. He's not starter material. Najee Good certainly isn't. C.O. Moore. That's not... Is that Sterling? Sky Moore. I don't even... I don't really know who that is. Clayton Gathers. We got Matthias Farley. It's a bad secondary. Pierre Desir is starting. We got Quincy Wilson. Marcus Hunt is still in the league somehow. We got Al Woods. Danico Autry. Jabal Sheard is good. And Terrell Basham is probably going to start at right end for me. This is a really really bad team i love hassan ridgeway hook and horns but this team is so bad i gotta trade a lot of these guys try to get in you know some draft picks some fresh faces we gotta turn this team around the interesting thing about this team and even adam vinatieri can tell you it's an old old team he's 45 but the top players on the team are all not exactly where i'd like them to be in terms of age and then it really doesn't get better. T.Y. Hilton's 28. He's going to start to regress pretty soon. We're going to keep him around, though. Jabal Sheard is 29. He's going to be regressing at the end of the season. Andrew Luck, 28. He'll be a kind of a question mark. He's a huge contract. Jack Doyle probably will start to regress at the end of this season or next. Eric Ebron's fine. We don't have to worry about him, but I probably will trade him. Anthony is going to go way down in overall. Al Woods, 31. He's going to go way down in overall. And then we get into the 70 overall players. Nobody in here besides Malik Hooker is any good. So I figured a kind of a fun thing to do would be to go after Jamal Adams. We get the two best safeties in that draft class in Jamal Adams and, of course, Malik Hooker already on the team. Anthony Costanzo, Al Woods in a third-round draft pick gets it done. We don't need Anthony Costanzo or Al Woods. They're older. Yeah, it's going to be probably a little bit worse in the short term because we're missing now our starting defensive tackle. And, of course, more importantly, starting left tackle to protect Andrew Luck, but injuries are off, so that's just kind of a weird storyline thing. Jamal Adams is good. We're going to improve that secondary. We'll trade Matthias Farley. We'll trade Clayton Gethers. Maybe we can even pick up a tackle in the process. All right, boom. Corey Moore, Clayton Gethers, and a fourth-round pick for Daryl Williams. That's going to improve the offensive line. He'll likely play left tackle and protect Andrew Luck's blind side. It's, you know, Malik Hooker's going to be the starting free safety anyway. Corey Moore serves no value. And then I'm fine with starting Matthias Farley over Clayton Gathers. We'll look to improve the position later anyway. And then we're just ditching a fourth round pick. So it's nothing too crazy for a good starting left or right tackle, depending on what you want to do. I mean, he could really play either. But, I mean, LaRaven Clark is, is the alternative at left tackle. And that's just not going to work. Ryan Grant, Jacoby Brissett, and a future fourth round draft pick gets us a one and a two this year from the Buffalo Bills. Looking to stockpile draft picks a little bit. I think that's going to be the best way to improve the team. So now we do have two first round picks, two second round picks. I'd like to do more in the mid rounds. Maybe another two, a couple of threes in there. That would be pretty nice. Danico Autry gets me a third round pick from the Miami Dolphins. 
And then Braden Smith and a seven gets me a third round pick from the New York Jets. I think I'm done making trades. There's not a whole lot of trade value on this team to begin with. So I think we're just probably going to rock out with who we have. Daryl Williams will be moved to left tackle. He's in there on the depth chart already, but I'm going to change his position to left tackle. And then we're going to look for a lot of different positions in the offseason. It, it's really going to be played by year, see who's there uh, in the draft and then free agency, and we'll decide what we want to do. But, ooh, Eric Ebron could be traded as well. Hmm. I'm just going to hold on to both tight ends for right now. But I think this pretty much will be the team. It's not a good team. It's nice to see a Deion Kane will actually be starting, kind of. I mean, he's, he's in there at number three. And then uh, defensively, we're just terrible. We're just going to take take the loss in the first season and say we're going to be bad and it's going to see you're going to you guys are going to see how Jabal Shear just goes down and overall it's going to be pretty annoying but I think that's probably going to be it I think it's time to simulate I'm also I'm going to start Kamoko Ture at right end instead of Marcus Hunt we are going to release Marcus Hunt ah it doesn't make sense too it doesn't really hurt that bad we're going to release Marcus Hunt and I would love for Terrell Basham to play I really would but he just, he just won't. I, I'm going to go with Kamoko Ture. Nice uh, kid out of Rutgers. Pretty underrated. His tape was pretty good. Decent speed, finesse moves. We got something to work with here. But it is time to simulate to the midseason mark and see if this atrocity of a team can perform even at all. And my guess would be that it cannot. Ooh, ready to see what our record is. 0-8. Killer. Love to see that. Darren Williams is a free agent. Or impending. So we will have to bring him back. Adam Vinatieri, also Matthias Farley. Definitely should have traded him knowing this information now. There's no way Adam Vinatieri doesn't retire. But we're going to try to ink him to a, a two-year deal. Of which he accepts. I, I don't want Matthias Farley on the team. I wish I could have gotten some type of value for him. Because I'm fairly certain I would have been able to get, I don't know, a third round pick or so. So that's a missed opportunity. I probably would have been better off simulating to the offseason because we certainly are not making the playoffs. But nevertheless, we're going to see how everything's going. Uh, not not well. 4-12 and 12 would be our final record. And uh, Andrew Luck, one yard shy of 4,000 passing yards. I know uh, it's funny that we're the Colts when the Rams know a little something about being one yard short. 24 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. Pretty bad. Marlon Mack, about 800 yards, three touchdowns. Uh, yeah, but of course, if you guys don't know what I was talking about, the uh, the infamous stop on the one-yard line in the Titans-Rams Super Bowl where a uh, pass over the middle from McNair to, I don't remember, and then uh, Rams linebacker stepped up, made the tackle, stopped the Titans a yard short of the end zone. But yeah, that's a story for another time. Interesting receiving numbers as we have Deion Kane kind of went off kind of went off hopefully he's rewarded in terms of uh xp skill points things like that darius leonard leads our team in tackles with 125 also had 13 tackles for loss four sacks and two picks that's defensive player of the year caliber numbers jabal sheard led our team in sacks with seven did not get a whole lot of pressure interception three for pierre Desir, three for malik hooker both led the team which is not an incredible amount to lead the team with and then only two forced fumbles on the entire team and no recoveries Good to see that we're really uh, getting a lot of turnovers. Must be why we're so good. Awards. Le'Veon Bell wins MVP of the 13-3 Pittsburgh Steelers. Jacoby Brissett uh, is in here. Former Colt. We traded him to the Bills earlier. And I guess they made him the starter. And the Bills went 11-5. And, and Jacoby Brissett's in top five for the MVP. That is wild. AFC Offense Player of the Year is Le'Veon Bell. No Colts in there. Defense player of the year, Vince Williams. Interesting, Ryan Shazier in there. Uh, any Colts, that's that's a travesty. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Sam Darnold of the 7-9 Jets. Deion Kane in there at number four. Should be higher, in my opinion. Naheem Hines is also in there. Defense rookie of the year does go to Darius Leonard. I might be so inclined to keep him around now. Probably not, but maybe. I'm not signing Matthias Farley. I can do better. Whether it's, you know, scouting or free agency, we're going to find a better strong safety. Oh, we already have Jamal Adams. Never mind. There was no reason not to. No reason not to what? Use your words. No reason not to trade him. We really should have. 
We have 69 mil to spend in cap or free agency in cap room. Nice. Moment of truth. So we did not sign Jay Ajayi, and we did not sign Dante Fowler Jr. Uh, a bit of a letdown there. And also, as I said, we start to see regression. Jabal Shear goes from an 88, or actually he was up to a 90, I believe. 89, 90 at one point. And he's down to an 86 now. As uh, you hate to see that. Not, not great. He did, he got star development though, which won't really matter because he's going down in overall. <laughs> We have the second pick in the draft. We also have the 24th, the 11th, the 24th, and the 2nd. Both those 11, 24. And then a couple of thirds, 5th and a 6th. It's going to be interesting to see who the Bucks uh, take number one. And then it's going to be Martinez Dunlap, receiver out of Alabama. Now, I'm not sure what I want here. I love a good trade down. You guys know that. But why, why not get Allen Saturday? Because, uh, you know, it was, he comes to play on Saturday. It's not college anymore, Alan. Welcome to the team. You're in the NFL now. 80 overall. Quick development. It still shows the glitch like we drafted him at number two overall, or number one overall when we did not. He's an 80 overall. 92 speed. 91 trucking. Great start. 83 brake tackle. 87 carrying. Not a good juke or spin move guy, but he's a power back, so I'm not really worried about that. He's a good player. Next up, I'm going Asher Shields out of Pitt. Sounds like he's got like a new album coming out. I don't know. 458 speed, fantastic bench press, great three cone, 20 yard shuttle, great broad jump, fantastic vertical, great top three skills. He's a very, very good player. I feel like this is a can't miss pick. I'm going to take him here. And he is an 80 overall, ranked number seven in the class. We take him at 24. Pretty good second round caliber player, if you will. 86 speed, 90 tackle, 83 block shed, 82 hit power. 88 pursuit, 86 strength, 69 zone coverage is nice. He is a uh, he's a pretty good player. Next up, we're going Marquis Zombo out of Indiana State. Decent top three skills, good speed, 5'11". He's his own style corner. That's what we have in our uh, our scheme anyway. So he's going to fit the bill pretty well. 74 overall, better than what we've got. Rank number 89 in the class. Bit of a reach here. Not going to lie. 89 speed, 78 man, 80 zone, 84 press. He's not terrible. What's bringing his overall down so much? Mm, not sure. I'm trading down this pick. Can I see a first round next year? No. Why would I? I want a 2020 pick, if anything. I'm going to do this manually. I'm going to see what type of value I can get for this pick. Let's go ahead and pause it. I can't really get anything to work manually, so we're just going to go accept that 2020 second round pick from the Tennessee Titans and then simulate into the third round where maybe we'll have better luck than that one pick in the second. I didn't, he, he just wasn't as good as I thought he might have been. He had good stuff, but like he, he didn't turn out to be that great. Spencer with an S. Well, two S's. I hate that. Spencer Bartell out of Colorado. He looks like he'd be okay. Probably not worth the third round pick that we're going to spend on him, but here he is. 76 overall, ranked number 38. So he definitely was worth the pick. He's a 76 overall speed rusher, 79 speed, 83 finesse move, 87 acceleration. I mean, he's all right. I feel like he's like, you know, not better than the cornerback we took though. Yet he's a higher overall and ranked way higher in the class. It's odd how that works out. All right, back to back picks. Um, all right. We're going to go Joey McNeil out of UCF. He's a projected six round pick. Oh, I could probably get him later with my fifth. We're not going to do that. I'm going to go Ellis McGraw, receiver out of Delaware. At the worst, he'll be like a 71 overall, which will come into the team, actually. Maybe give uh, Andrew Luck some more targets to throw to. 74 overall, not terrible. 90 speed, 82 catching, 80 catching traffic, 86 short, 78 medium, 78 deep route running. Decent release, no spectacular catch on him, even though he has the aggressive catch trait, which is odd. I mean, he's all right, 74 overall. I think that's, uh, other than T.Y. Hilton, the best receiver on our team currently, which is odd, to say the least. But, you know, it is later in the draft, though. So, I mean, I can't be expecting anything too crazy. Let's take that lineman. Joey McNeil, here he is. Only player left on my draft board. And he is a 75 overall, ranked number 59 in the class. Pretty good value for the pick. Low run blocking and pass blocking, but he's got good uh, overall blocking finesse. Good lead blocking and good impact blocking. 
just I don't like all the blocking numbers I'm gonna be honest he fits the scheme though as an agile offensive lineman he should slide in very nicely on the offensive line at right guard and we're gonna simulate to the end we need to get some weapons on this team very very badly does that mean changing the scheme maybe good I've changed the scheme I've changed it Quentin Nelson's power anyway he's power agile we're gonna you know just go totally into power Daryl Williams is very close to power and those are the only two like real pieces on the offensive line so that works that works for XP still works with Jack Doyle who's an 86 he hasn't started to regress although he will did he Nah, he may have regressed he definitely did all right that sucks and he doesn't have quick development or he doesn't have star or whatever it was now it's quick so that's great now is the time to trade Jack Doyle rock out with Eric Ebron uh, what is it what happened there rock out with Eric Ebron I can't say Ebron it's really hurting my throat for some reason mm. Eric Ebron there we go rock out with him as our starting tight end and we need to get receiving threats around Andrew Luck beef up the offensive line and then we're gonna be good to go boom talk about a new target for Andrew Luck Amari Cooper had a fantastic rookie year and then has slowed down a little bit partly due to the negligence of the Oakland Raiders and the lackluster ability of Derek Carr but you know he is he's faced some drop issues in his own right so we're not gonna you know pick apart one reason or the other why Amari Cooper's progression may have been halted a little bit but nonetheless he's a 90 overall in the game he's pretty good Jack Doyle Javal Sheard a third round pick or what it takes to acquire Amari Cooper I don't like dealing with regression Jabal Sheard is regressing and he will not be that good when this team is so I'd rather have Terrell Basham or Kamoko Ture and Spencer Bartell on the outside opposed to a Jabal Sheard that doesn't really help me out too much and I probably will end up starting Kamoko Ture and then trading Terrell Basham or one or the other this defense is pretty bad we do have some bright spots now Jamal Adams Malik Hooker of course that uh what is it Anthony Asher Shield that's right how could I forget Asher Shield and then Anthony Walker Jr but we do have some bright spots cornerback group is not really one of those we'll see what we can do but right now I need Andrew Luck to just go off I'm focusing all in on the offense we're making the offense better Amari Cooper is a huge addition and despite Deion Kane playing as well as he did I mean we need a better player because it's just not going to work with him that's just the way you know the slot works in this game with this particular you know uh, scheme fit or formation or playbook or whatever they're running out here the slot receiver is targeted a lot if we get a really good slot receiver in there uh things might change i'm not really sure what's going to happen but regardless i'm going to improve the offensive line probably get a right tackle and uh we'll see how that happens i guess i can't really do much because there's not much in the way of trade value with a lot of these guys in this roster so we're just going to stick with what we have which is a decent offense now a really poor offensive line as a whole and uh, a, a poor defense we have some playmakers there but overall there isn't much mid-season mark we are two and five not exactly where we'd like to be i forgot to turn on uh auto scouting so we've missed a few weeks there it's currently sitting at third in the afc south again not exactly where we'd like to be and the fact that the players that need to be getting skill points are not getting skill points is very bad for the progression of this franchise I will say that we're gonna go spend some coach XP and maybe accelerate that Amari Cooper is an impending free agent though perhaps why it was so easy to trade for him but I do not mind offering him a long-term contract extension which I'm sure we will do he's only 25 years old so Eric Ebron and Amari Cooper both re-signed I'm not sure where I fall on Ryan Kelly Rigoberto Sanchez probably will be re-signed Hassan Ridgeway as much as I love him there's no real need for him or anybody else to the right here so it'll likely just be Rigoberto Sanchez and we'll offer him a six-year deal worth 8.88 overall and uh, we're good with that Ryan Kelly I mean we can probably get better let's be honest I'm going to simulate to the offseason because we are not making the playoffs. That much is pretty clear to me. As you cannot see in the top left, the Bears defeated the Chiefs 25-22 in Super Bowl 54. We finished 6-10, clearly not good enough to make the playoffs. We will check out the stats, though. See how everyone performed, and Andrew Luck, 
I mean, it's just a product of the scheme, if we're being honest. 3,500 yards, only 25 touchdowns, but only seven picks. It's just a weird season, and we got him the targets, or, you know, the throw to Allen Saturday was overall pretty bad. 834 yards, two touchdowns, a fumble. It's just very confusing. Very confusing numbers here. I don't know how he only scored two touchdowns. I'm not sure how Marlon Mack was playing so much. Eric Ebron led her team in catches. Almost yards, but Amari Cooper took that. And he had eight touchdowns as well. Great season for Eric Ebron. But everything seems to be very, very tight end focused. As Asher Shields led our team in tackles 139. Also had six tackles for loss, two sacks, no picks. The sacks would be led by Spencer Bartell, the rookie out of Colorado. Not getting a whole lot of pressure on the quarterback, and we're certainly not getting a lot of interceptions, although the rookie Marquis Zombo out of Indiana State managed to haul in three forced fumbles. We only had three for the entire team, and it looks like two recoveries. As yes, only two recoveries. This team is going to need to improve a lot over this next offseason if we're going to do anything, because offensively, we're a disaster. Defensively, we're, a, we're a disaster. Zeke won MVP, though, of the 10-6 and 6 Cowboys, and I doubt you'll see any Colts here as you do not. AFC Offensive Player of the Year is Le'Veon Bell. No Colts. Defensive Player of the Year is Miles Jack. No Colts. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to the rookie running back. Of course a rookie, but the running back, Allen Saturday. For us, and Ellis McGraw, wide receiver, coming in at number two. So right up there. And then defensive rookie of the year is Asher Shields, middle linebacker. I thought, I didn't think he'd win it, but he did. I thought if anybody, it might have been more uh, Marquis Zombo or Spencer Bartell, I believe his name is. But that's cool to see. Time for the offseason. We're not getting a whole lot of uh, skill points, which worries me a little bit. Yannick Ngakwe is a free agent. That is top priority. The entire Jaguars are here. And by that, I mean two. Miles Jack also... Top priority free agent. He would play outside linebacker more than likely. I'd like to pick up the top two. Also, I hear Yannick Ngakwe has a face scan finally in the game. Let's see how good this looks. And it looks pretty good. Pretty good, not going to lie. So I am offering Yannick Ngakwe a major, major, major contract. Although, considering his ability, his age, this isn't that crazy. It is seven years. 11 and a half is the salary. It's 122 over seven. Signing bonus is a uh, six mil. So it's a pretty big deal, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not that massive. And we have 119 total points. It should be, you know, clear as day that we'll end up landing him, but you never know. <laughs> you never know. If you guys watch Giants franchise on my channel, which I hope that you do, but if you don't, Khalil Mack was in free agency in my Giants franchise. One of my favorite players in the NFL. I really wanted him. I had the lead on him. I had a big lead, yet it still wasn't enough, and he still didn't sign. The Redskins came back at the last minute to seal him right out from under me. It was a uh, it was a sad time. Show me Yannick Ngakwe. We got both. Yannick Ngakwe, Miles Jack, and Tavon Young. The defense has now been a little bit revamped here in the offseason already, and we're certainly not done. Yannick Ngakwe is a huge addition to the team. He fits the scheme as well. And then Miles Jack will fit in very nicely at either right or left outside linebacker, depending on what I want to do. I think for the for the sake of this team, I think right outside linebacker is going to be the play for Miles Jack, who certainly will not wear number 99. It doesn't really matter, actually, but I probably will end up changing that. Actually, that's not even true, but Miles Jack now fits the scheme at right outside linebacker. And Darius Leonard, who has star development, because he won Rookie of the Year, I believe, and he's, he's played pretty well. I'm going to keep him starting at left outside linebacker. Uh, out of uh, SC State, kind of a small school, but a decent player nonetheless. He will play left outside linebacker, and at left outside linebacker, he will also fit the scheme. So the XP is going to be more than he would be getting otherwise. This is a really, really big change for us. This has been a tremendous free agency so far. Tavon Young is a big addition to the team because he's our newest cornerback, and he's the highest overall by a lot. He's almost zone scheme anyway. So he'll eventually fit the scheme. I can guarantee that. And then Marquis Zombo cannot be the starting cornerback on that on that side. It just can't happen. And then offensively, we're looking better. I just have to improve the offensive line. We're going to have... Uh, I believe McNeil will fit at right guard. Oh, he might not. It might be power at right guard. I'm not really sure. We're going to figure it out here uh, in a moment. But I am ready to scout... And then see you guys for the draft. NFL draft time. We are sitting at the sixth overall pick. We're going to simulate right there. 
Nothing to it but to do it. Let's go right to the sixth overall pick as a left tackle. Tyrone Trannon goes to the Buccaneers out of Auburn. We don't have a pick until the second round. This is going to have to be a really, really big pick. And I'm going positional value here. Wade Najvar out of Ohio State. He looks very solid. Great bench. Great top skills. He's going to start and maybe eventually fit our scheme. He should be pretty good for power. And he is fantastic in general. Power is only 76 overall, but he is superstar development. He's ranked number eight. We took him at number six. And of course, now they have it updated. So the development really matters for a lot. Superstar is huge. I don't usually take offensive linemen in the first round, but I think it's worth it more this year than ever. Next up, I'm going best player on my board. That's Paris Gray out of Central Michigan. Decent enough top three skills. Should fill the role. 74 overall. Uh, I mean, this is just, it's an overall not great draft class. And we missed out on the talent. I mean, we took a great first pick. But after that, I mean, there just, there wasn't much, as you can see. It's just terrible. I'm going to take Darren Gibbs here. He's a fourth round projected player. I like him a lot more than that. He's going to start for sure. I think he's going to be a beast. Darren Gibbs, welcome to the team. 76 overall normal development. Uh, it's not really a reach. <laughs> we draft him at 38. He's ranked number 39. Normal is annoying, but he fits the scheme. He's going to be a good player. He'll probably come in and start. And I'll see if uh, we can take any value in the fifth round, although I doubt it. Go with another offensive lineman, Jabrian McKinney out of Minnesota. 78 overall, rank number 22 in the class. Of course, we did not take him at one. This is a fifth round pick. He's a lot better than I expected him to be. It's a little bit harder to gauge this year because they have all the different blocking stats. It's kind of like a crapshoot. If you get lucky, you get lucky. And I, I kind of got lucky here with a first round caliber player in the fifth round. Not too bad, but that's going to do it for this draft in 2020. As a 76 overall defensive tackle goes to the Browns out of Nebraska late. That's a pretty good pick. As far as I know in the title update, they also have it so you can now see the entire NFL and who got the best uh, player in the entire draft just at a moment's look. And they do have that. Highest overall in the class was an 82. So we actually did pretty well with one of the best players in the entire class. It's good to see. As you can see, T.Y. Hilton regressing as well. I should have traded him when I had the chance. And that chance, you know, it's not necessarily passed, but like kind of has because, uh, I don't know, he's a worse overall than he was. He's an 86 now, which is decent. It's just, it's going to be an 84 at the end of this season. And I don't think this team can do much this season. I don't think we're ready, but we have improved a lot. So you never know. Oh yeah. Quentin Nelson is not going to play center. That just is he's not going to. We're going to have McKinney play center, Gibbs at right guard, Quentin Nelson at left guard. And then our tackles are actually pretty good now. The offense, I think, is coming along pretty nicely. The defense now is looking much better than it had looked. We're going to look for a defensive tackle. I'll see if I can trade either Kamoko Ture or Terrell Basham, if not both, for an upgrade at a, a defensive tackle because these guys will not be able to slide inside. But if Kamoko Ture, we're going to change him to right end. And then see if we can package, you know, both of these guys to a team that needs edge rushers. Uh, shockier that that went through. I, shocking. I, I don't even know what to say. Kamoko Ture, Ellis McGraw gets me Fletcher Cox. I just, I tried it to try it and it worked. It's unbelievable what just happened in my opinion. I think you guys will probably agree that was insane. But Fletcher Cox is a nice addition to the team, I suppose. And uh, yeah, we still have Terrell Basham to trade if there's any interest there. I'd love an upgrade at cornerback. I really would. And then offensively, we could do with a receiver. I, I don't love T.Y. Hilton. A third round pick and Marlon Mack for Tariq Cohen. So it's technically a better running back than we have. But also, I don't want Tariq Cohen as a running back. I potentially want him as a slot receiver or a trade piece. He's an 81 overall receiving back question is what is your overall at wide receiver because that will determine a lot of what we do here in the future depending on trade value and that sort of thing so Tariq Cohen is a 65 overall receiver that is not gonna work big moves we're trading a first round pick but it's all right Tariq Cohen backup guard McNeil for Darius big play slay from the Detroit Lions 
this will hopefully help solidify our secondary 87 offense 87 defense and he actually has a skill point as well so even though he's like what 28 29 in this roster at this point he's 29 that's fine we will uh, go into zone coverage here make him a 92 overall the 25 just doesn't look quite right on him but that's it's okay he's gonna he's gonna wear it the cornerback group is now pretty good the defensive line is sick Darius Slay is here he fits the scheme this better be a team that performs uh you know better than they did in the past that's all I can say I think I think this is a team that can actually play okay mid-season mark four and four this is improvement currently I mean, the AFC South is anybody's game right now it is close following a 29 to 26 win over the Cincinnati Bungles and we got some skill points Najvar with superstar dev has two I think I'm gonna go into power his overall might not increase too much kind of shocked he even went up to an 81 overall and I think speed even went up but he's gonna go up to an 82 overall and he is I mean we're cooking with fire here things are things are progressing quickly for him team has been upgraded as much as you could upgrade this team which isn't all that far Andrew Luck is now 30 did he face regression at any point I'm not sure feels like he's pretty much staying exactly where he is which isn't the worst thing it's not the best Darius Slay needs to be re-signed probably another reason why we were able to trade for him as easily as we were able to and there are actually a lot of players here I never ended up trading Terrell Basham Vinatieri is still here and is a lot worse than he was down to a 78 but we will try to re-sign these top four at least keep you guys posted so Malik Hooker, T.Y. Hilton, Jamal Adams, Darius Slay, all re-signed. Those are the only four I'm really concerned about at all. We are going to simulate to the playoffs. I think there's a decent chance we actually do end up making the playoffs. I don't think it's fantastic, but I think it's like maybe 60-40. And the moment of truth. No, we lose. We go 7-9. and nine. I don't like to see that very much, but this means Season 4 could be very productive. We've improved each year. Andrew Luck now amping up. The passing yards, although the interceptions go up and the touchdowns stay relatively the same. Rushing, Allen Saturday has been kind of an embarrassment as he hasn't really done much his entire NFL career thus far after a few years. Eric Ebron is still dominating. T.Y. Hilton's playing all right. I mean, Deion Kane's played well so far. He's just overall hasn't changed at all, which I think is stupid. Miles Jack and Asher Shields are very close in terms of total tackles. Asher Shields is more solo. Miles Jack assisted for more. Tackles for loss, 15 for Taekwon Lewis, 12 for Fletcher Cox. Taekwon Lewis also, 8 sacks, although Yannick Ngakwe led our team with 9.5. Interceptions, 4 for Darius Slay. Nobody else really got uh, anything noteworthy in my opinion. Force fumbles, only three for the team and then two recoveries miles jack kind of putting on a one-man show and then i assume no defensive touchdowns as no darius big play slay making big plays with a defensive touchdown love to see that as matty ice wins mvp of the 10 and 6 atlanta falcons no colts afc office player of the year Le'Veon bell no colts defensive player of the year ryan shazier no colts offensive rookie of the year ellis perry get one colt lenny neal all right, defensive rookie deer goes to Lester Ratliff. And what do you know? No Colts. I don't remember really drafting any rookies anyway that were uh, anything other than offensive linemen. Let's see if anybody's here in free agency. I'm not really sure what this team needs outside of a receiver and a cornerback, maybe. Uh, Tariq Cohen's here. He's a 90 overall. I guess the team that traded for him had no interest in resigning him, which is fine with me. Desmond King is here. I would be heavily interested in signing him. That would probably complete our cornerback trio. Darius Slay regresses to an 89. Hate to see that. So we got both Desmond King and Kenny Galladay. Those are the two players I went after. And I said Kenny Galladay's name really odd just there. <laughs> but uh, it is what it is. Our receiving core, I think, is now complete. Although T.Y. Hilton's down to an 84. I think Kenny Galladay is going to be able to come in as a replacement very nicely. And then defensively with the addition of Desmond King. I mean, we are firing on all cylinders here. We are in a fantastic position for a lot of these players. The defense is great. We got Yannick Ngakwe is such a beast. One of the most underrated players in the NFL. Desmond King's awesome. We got Malik Hooker, Jamal Adams. 
I mean, we have a pretty good team at this point. I would be very upset if we don't uh, do something here after the draft in season number four, which will be the fourth and final season. Oh, did I simulate? Nope. Okay. I thought I accidentally simulated the draft. We don't have a first round pick. We do pick in the second round. I don't think it's going to matter that much. There doesn't appear to be anyone of real value in the draft, which is disappointing. And I'm not really sure what it is that we need on the team at this point. I like everyone where they are for the most part. I know we could use some improvement uh, at center, maybe at right guard for sure. At right tackle, uh, I think we're fine, but center and right guard for sure. And then we can change these positions around. We have a defensive line. I think we're in a pretty good spot overall at like every position except for the offensive line. So if I could trade a, you know, a right guard the starting right guard and a second round pick for a better one i mean i'd be for that give me darren gibbs and a second round pick for joel batonio he's gonna come in and play right guard that's gonna be it for the draft uh, we have a fourth round pick no one that we take in the fourth round is gonna come in and play so it's pretty irrelevant at this particular juncture we're gonna go ahead and simulate to the end i'll see you guys for the start of season number four all right this is the team it looks pretty good defense looks awesome one of the fun most fun defenses i put together honestly with all the different players and scheme fits and things like that. And the offense looks pretty good as well. Hopefully they perform as I expect them to. And I guess without further ado, let's go ahead and simulate to the postseason. I really, actually we'll go midseason first, then we'll upgrade, then we'll simulate to the postseason, the, the end of uh, season number four. We're two and five, this has been a failure. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. The team's good, this always happens. Not always, but when it does, it's uh, very disappointing. We put together a good team, you know, great overall, good scheme fit. Now, scheme fit only matters, by the way, if you're new to Madden this year. Uh, it only matters for XP, so it doesn't. it's not about on-field production. It's literally only about XP. That's the only thing that matters. All right, playoff time. I think we'd have to uh, pretty much win out. I mean, we don't have to, but winning out would be awesome as far as... Uh, our chances to make the playoffs go and we do make the playoffs we go eight and eight how do we make the playoffs at eight and eight we're third in our division was the rest of the afc just that bad let's see here let's go to the afc uh wow we barely made the wild card that's uh pretty incredible but i'm a fan of this i like the playoffs <laughs> i am so lucky let's check out the stats as Andrew Luck, 4,500 yards, 28 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, rushing. Allen Saturday still sucks as he really only plays on Saturdays because Sunday he just doesn't bring it. Receiving, Ebron still killing it. 1,000 yards for Amari Cooper and T.Y. Hilton, who had 8 touchdowns. Blocking, offensive line performed pretty well. And then defensively, Asher Shields, 142 tackles, including 8 for a loss, 7 for Miles Jack. Quarterback sack, six and a half for Yannick Ngakwe, five for Miles Jack and Fletcher Cox. Interceptions, four for big play Slay, two for Tavon Young. Nothing really that notable there. And then forced fumbles, two for the entire team. And then I believe only one recovery from Darius Slay. Any touchdowns? One from, of course, who but Darius, big play Slay as Deshaun Watson wins the MVP. No Colts in there, AFC Offense Player of the Year. Andrew Luck, top 10. All right, I'll take it. Defense player of the year, Denzel Perryman. Get Miles Jack in there at number nine. The rookies do not matter. All right, I'm going to upgrade the team, and then we're going to play the moments versus the 11-5 and five Los Angeles Chargers to try and advance to the divisional. I think we can do it. This is a good team. I don't, I don't really know what to tell you. Team looks pretty good. I've upgraded them about as much as I can. 95 offense, 93 defense. The most notable overall, I would say, our overall bump shields up to an 86 jamal adams at a 96 but offensively i was upgrading Najvar, and he is incredible not only does he have you know all these great numbers but 88 run block 96 pass block the run block power is terrible but what an incredible player big fan time to play the moments though it's a good team i hope we win we're a 90 overall to their 86 unreal all right defense needs our help how about they just do it like by themselves i don't want to help this is why i do rebuilds dude i don't want to play it's a run 
Shut it down. Darius Leonard in the backfield. If there's one thing I do well, it's shut down the run on all Madden. We're not going to talk about defending the pass or anything else, but I defend the run pretty well. Oh, I really thought I was there for that one. Darius Leonard just not quite fast enough. Nick Foles is their QB. Oh, okay, interesting. And a touchdown. Yikes. All right, first and 10 from the 15. Moments is making us take over. Here's Andrew Luck on the play action. Oh, no. No one was really open there. Joey Bosa gets to the quarterback. Not what you want. Let's see if we can do something on a uh, second and 19. I don't really like to check down, so we're going to take off with Andrew Luck. Really need that block to hold longer, but I'll take the 10. Going to be third and 10 as we get back to where we were. All right, I need Eric Ebron here. Oh, I liked it over the middle. I'm going to settle for that, though. And uh, unbelievable diving play by Denzel Perryman. A thumper by trait, but I guess he's making a huge red zone play there. And uh, we're going to go ahead and let the Indianapolis Colts kick the field goal. We're only down by a little bit here. We're taking over. Third and five. Let's do something something offensively. I don't know why I just developed like a slight German accent. Let's do something offensively. Lob pass. Eric Ebron. Down to the 20. And we can't convert. We're going to go ahead and kick the field goal. Only down by one. And of course the defense just bends over and takes it. That's mine. What? I'm confused. How did I miss that interception? I'd love to I'd love to see it in the replay mode cuz uh I really thought I had lurked that. Oh man, that's brutal. I really did and I got an animation and the ball just kind of sails over his hands. He just didn't put him up all the way. He didn't jump. Oh killer i'm gonna try to score before the half let's see if that's possible um i really want anyone but triangle we're gonna throw it to triangle though it's ty hilton i really wanted that wheel to develop because it would have been a ton of yards but i mean i'll take the check down that's a good one ty hilton didn't know if we would have had the ability to rat catch there didn't know where the strong safety was so we did have a lot of room probably after the completion as they sent a huge man blitz. But uh, I didn't know that. So down at the 28. We're moving though. Big third down. I'm kind of surprised that uh, Kenny Galladay is not on the field. That's a little bit annoying. But uh, we're going to look for something there. It's a lob pass. It's Neil. Get there. How are you stopped on the one? That is unbelievable. How is it not a touchdown? Surely the power back Saturday can punch this into the end zone on a first and goal. We have a decent offensive line. I just need a block. And we're going to get the touchdown. All right. All right. We're going to skip another moment. We're going to take the lead 15-14. And already our defense is just letting up huge chunk plays. Can we please hold on? All right. We're going to use her Desmond King. Probably not the best decision. As he is one of our best. It's a user pick. Easy reads. Green eggs and ham. Desmond King with the user pick. And the ball is going right back in the correct direction. Indianapolis Colts football. And we did not do much with it. Third and three. That's been the sole turnover of the entire game. We're going to go ahead and hand the ball off to, to Saturday here. Allen Saturday. I need a first down to kill the clock. That's a, that's a uh, fuck. Can we kick a 60 yard field goal? No way. Oh my god, that's gonna sneak in. That sneaks in. <laughs> We've drilled a 60 yarder barely. The no kick arc is tough, but 18 to 14, where we got the lead. You gotta make that play. Jamal Adams picks it off. Give me a block. Go, Jamal. Go, Jamal. Jamal Adams, huge interception. This could ice the game. Third and 11. We're going to take a shot. T.Y. Hilton, not what you want. Right, let's just make a stop. We're up by a touchdown somehow. Third and four. 
This is maybe the biggest play of the game. It's not because it's four down territory. But I said maybe. Keep them in bounds. All right, clock's ticking. Never mind. They got the first down there. Interesting. Play action. Throw at me. Somebody make the play. Not you. Whoever that is on the outside. I'm watching the lead just slip away. What? Where is anybody there? Okay. Yikes. Second and go. Would it be out of the question to pass commit here? I'm going to do it. It's a pass. It's a pass. It's a user pick. Easy read. Top on pop. Go, Miles. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you ice a football game. Miles Jack, somehow barely outrunning Nick Foles, finds his way into the end zone for the touchdown. Ladies and gentlemen, your final score will be, I believe, somewhere in the neighborhood of 27 to 14 on all Madden difficulty, in case you were curious about that. Doesn't particularly matter, but some people some people like to know. But that is the end of the football game. 28 to 14 is your final. And this charge team, goodbye, go home. Oh, you are home? Okay, who cares? Uh, we're gonna move on. At Energy Stadium, we gotta face the Houston Texans. I don't love that very much. What's their overall? They got the MVP. You know, undoubtedly the best quarterback maybe of all time in Deshaun Watson. Let's see how this game goes. We're better overall, but that doesn't matter for jack shit, as you guys are fully aware. We're up 7-3 to three already. I say already. It's already the second quarter, but we can take over here and get a big score. First and 10, and boy do I love me a quick slant. Amari Cooper, he's open. Not really. He dropped the ball. And that's Andrew Luck's first incompletion. How about a good streak? Quick streak to my man, Vince Neal. Not his name. Vince Neal is the lead singer of Motley Crue. As Alan Saturday with the catch there. I love it. We're going to give it back to Saturday on... Maybe it's Saturday. I mean, the playoffs happen on Saturday sometimes. That's a first down. We're going to move into the hurry up. But first and goal. That is a stacked box. Watch T.Y. Hilton off the rip. Blitz and boom diving catch for three yards watch me do it again <laughs> ty hilton touchdown the slant is undefeatable unbeatable and i think we're about done playing this game it is out of reach for the houston texans as we are skipping the moments now and it is it is just just bad in general for the texans they really never had a chance 38 to 6 is your final score as this Indianapolis Colts team is uh, as good as it's been. Andrew Luck, quite a performance. Who cares about stats? I only care about one stat. That's the win. And we got it. I'll see you in the AFC Conference Championship. And that is against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And whomever their replacement for Big Ben Roethlisberger is, maybe he's even still the quarterback. I'm not too sure. I am sure about one thing, though. Steelers fucking suck. Exciting game so far. We're down six. I might as well take over. See if we can score some points before halftime. They gave it to me on first and 20, and I've managed to get nine yards. Not my best offensive work. Certainly not my worst. As we're going to lob that pass. Eric Ebron. First down. All right, let's run Pat's wise. Stutter. Find, I don't know, Kenny Galladay. I can't even sit in my chair properly. Kenny Galladay could be open here. He is. Boom. Oh, that's a dime. Eric Ebron, touchdown. And this game, oh, don't hit the whip. Don't, don't, don't do any of that. And here's tight end whip. Ironic. That's an ironic play call for after the play we just saw. Honestly, it's it's true it's true justice. Do you know what I'm saying? Roll out. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. I should not have done that. Oh, what a ball from Andrew Luck finding TY Hilton in the end zone 
and we have capitalized with a touchdown surely and uh, I don't really care about ah fine. We'll, we'll step in third and eight how about a user pick how about it oh that is that's an excellent lobbed pass I, there's not much you can say that's that's the perfect pass that's the best pass I've ever seen oh and it's 14 14 okay what if we waste the entire fourth quarter here it's doable get out of the way trains coming through the station get off the tracks boom all right your ass is grass and I'm the lawnmower okay not really it's third and goal and I still have not scored that's bad third and goal we should run off the back of Quentin Nelson. That's probably our best bet. It's one-on-one. -on -one. Oh my goodness. Ryan Shazier just blew up Allen Saturday. And we have a... Oh man, I, I am confused as to what's happening here. Let's, let, me just, let me just drill it. Prove all the haters wrong. Suck it, haters. 17-14. We're going to lose the game now. All we need is a good old-fashioned stop. Man coverage... I'm oh, man up, Antonio Brown. What's the worst that can happen? I'm a beast. Yeah. Avoid me at all costs. You've read the scouting report, Big Ben. I'm going to stay an exclusively man. And exclusively shadow Antonio Brown with a linebacker? Why not? That's got to be a pick. I press triangle. He didn't do anything. However, notice Big Ben refuses to throw at me. Doesn't matter, you know, who I'm on. He knows. Again, man coverage versus Antonio Brown. I've been exposed. That was a fantastic out. I'll give him that. But, uh, you know, he got me. That's, that's fair. That'll happen. What? Antonio Brown is a down lineman. He's lining up as a tight end. Like, what is happening? Dude, they're going to score a touchdown. Can't you just tell sometimes? It's just the worst. It's going to take an interception at this point. Oh, it's a pick! Darius! Big play, Slay! Pick six to end the game in back-to-back -back weeks. For this Indianapolis defense. Oh my goodness. It was going to take a pick to force us from going to overtime. And that's what happened. Unbelievable. 24 to 14 is your final. On a pick six from Darius. Big play slay. Slay. Santa slay. Let me in your chimney. All right, the 8-8 eight eight Indianapolis Colts will face the 13-3 LA Rams. We are 95 offense and 95 defense, of course. That adds up to uh, 91 overall somehow. Allen Saturday will get a boost, and uh, I'm sure that he will not be playing well because he doesn't. He just doesn't do that, which is fine. Team's upgraded. We're ready to go. Super Bowl Dallas versus the LA Rams, dude. 91 again to their 87 see how it goes it's a pretty close game so far i haven't taken over because i don't want to but it, we might as we got to take over now it's the fourth quarter we're down by seven third and five super bowl on the line a little bit strange i know that i played more of every other game than the actual super bowl but you know what it's all for good reason it's gonna make it all the more exciting in the end that was almost a great stop, but Todd Gurley fell forward for eight yards. We did not wrap up. We're going to be down by 14, about two and a half minutes to go. We're going to have to score very, very quickly. It's great. It's great. Good start. We need to score as quickly as possible. It'd be awesome if I could snap the ball. Kenny Galladay catches it. We're going to move into the hurry up. We maybe will have a minute to not only stop them, but score again. I don't like our odds. I'm going to be honest. I don't like them. I love them. Kenny Galladay again. Great catch. 
Fourth and 10, game on the line. We're going to the well. It's worked a couple times already. We're running verticals of some sort. And that's the only thing that's open. Allen Saturday keeps the drive alive. And we're going to go to the hurry up. We're, we got to run something, man. Sure, this this will work. Quickly. Neil down at the two. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. First and goal after the offsides wastes a lot of time. And there's Eric Ebron. He holds on, touchdown. We're going to have no time. That holding, like, I, it didn't even, it, it hurt us a lot. All right, we need the onside kick. Let's hope we get it. Come on. Come on, Rigoberto Sanchez. Nah, they recover. How did we lose our timeouts? Dude, it didn't even give me moments. It didn't even give me a moment. That's the game. Uh, so we lose, obviously. I, I really don't know what happened that we lost our... Uh, we lost our timeouts there. Oh, because Todd Gurley rushed for a first down. That's that's so frustrating that it just simulated straight there. Uh, can't win them all. We made the Super Bowl. I'll take it in year four. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Like the video if you enjoyed it. And I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.